Chris Mannix for SI.com alongside Rowan Ned Carney and Michael Pina. Guys, the Clippers are off to a strong start to the season, while Paul George is playing like an early MVP candidate, saying he is playing with a vengeance this year after all the criticism he received in the bubble. So, Rohan, are you buying the Clippers and Paul George? I'm buying the Clippers and Paul George thoroughly. You know, I'm here in Los Angeles. No one is talking about the Clippers here. It feels like no one's talking about the Clippers nationally. Uh, I think they're a really good team, and I think they're right up there with the, the Lakers, the Nets, the Bucks, whoever you consider the contenders in the NBA. Uh, you know, Paul George, his last season with the Thunder, he was an MVP finalist. He was playing amazing until he hurt his shoulder. He missed the start of last season with the Clippers, and then the bubble happened. Uh, this is someone who's a great player who, for some reason, uh, people are way overvaluing what happened in the bubble uh, as a Paul George referendum. He's proven himself in the playoffs even before then. I think the Clippers and Paul George are, are both going to be really good, uh, especially if the playoffs are, are more normal by the time they roll around this year uh, than they were in the bubble. I, I think this is a really good deep team and this is someone who I, I think has been a proven performer for so long that it never made sense to me how much criticism he got uh, for what happened in Orlando. Yeah, Rowan, I think the big thing here is that Paul George is healthy. You know, he's coming off the two, last season he came off the two shoulder operations that hampered his training camp and his ability to kind of integrate with Kawhi Leonard and the new team. This is the 1A superstar that they traded for, the perfect complement for someone like Kawhi. Now, what I will say is that the outside shooting can't possibly stay what it is. If he shoots 48% on pull-up threes and 70% from the corner and hits 50% of his contested threes, then he's gonna win the MVP. Um, and in a trend that's carried over, over from last season, the Clippers still aren't very good when Paul George is on the floor without Kawhi. Whereas when Kawhi is on the floor without Paul George, they are a juggernaut. So I am buying Paul George right now, but I am doing it with a little bit of trepidation, knowing that his, his numbers are just a little unsustainable to me. But he is a better player than what we saw in the bubble. Yeah, 50% from the floor, 50% from three. Those numbers are just can't hold up over the course of a season. Look, I like Paul George. Uh, I think he's a very good player, but... I'm going to need a bigger sample size here. I'm going to need to get into March, April, and of course, May and maybe June uh, to see what Paul George and this team is made. I mean, they're saying all the right things right now. They're talking about how their chemistry is so much better this season, which is like code for it was Montrezl Harrell's fault. Um, they're getting contributions <laughs> from you know guys like Reggie Jackson and Serge Ibaka. They're, they're doing some nice things out there on the floor. But I still need to see, Rohan, how this team performs when the going gets tough. I still need to see who is going to emerge as a leader within this group. I mean, Paul George and Kawhi Leonard didn't just, you know, aren't going to become these vocal leaders overnight. That's never been their bag. And respectfully, you keep pointing to, like, Paul George's proven playoff track record. When? From Indiana? We're going back to the Pacers days? Because in Oklahoma City, it wasn't there. And last season with the Clippers, it wasn't there. Again, Paul George is someone you want to see succeed because he is a really likable guy. But the first, you know, dozen or so games in a season, I just need to see what happens with his team. It's a rough patch somewhere in the middle of the year. And I certainly need to see what they do in the latter stages once the playoffs start. Listen, you guys are not wrong, but, you know, just some perspective on Paul George. You're mentioning the playoff performances. Uh, he went toe-to-toe -to -toe with LeBron, credibly, in those Heat Pacers series. Uh, his years in Oklahoma City that first year, uh, they were playing great in that series whenever Carmelo was off the floor. Uh, that second season with Oklahoma City, uh, he played better, to, to Michael's point about him and Kawhi Leonard. Uh, that Thunder team was better with Paul George on the floor and, and Russ on the bench than with the two of them playing together. Uh, I think that says a lot about what Paul George was doing for that team. Uh, I, I just think they have a, a really deep roster. I like them bringing in a guy like Serge Ibaka. I don't know that he can be a, a vocal rah-rah leader, but I do think he's a great locker room guy who's going to help their chemistry there. Uh, last season, I don't think the Clippers paid a lot of respect to the regular season, to be honest. And I, I think they learned their lesson from that. And I also think it's normal for teams to lose in their first year. It, it doesn't always happen uh, right away. Uh, you know, the Celtics winning in 2008, uh, that doesn't always happen. So I, I do think that 
they learned their lesson from that year. I agree they're saying the right things. It still needs to be proven uh, come playoff time. But I do think between Kawhi and Paul George, you have two guys who have excelled on big stages. I'm glad, Rohan, you thought that last year in Oklahoma City was a rousing success. I, I feel like that was uh, a disappointment on all levels for everyone involved in that. Michael, let me let me put the last word here to you. I mean, am I overvaluing the need for leadership here? I mean, Paul George in Indiana, to Rohan's point, was excellent, played really well. But the leader on that team, the heart and soul, was David West. Uh, Kawhi Leonard, in his previous stops, he's had Tim Duncan in San Antonio. He's had Kyle Lowry and others in Toronto. Um, I mean, is is leadership overrated with this group, or the need for it, I should say? It could be. I mean, as you know, Chris, in the NBA, talent really rules the day, and this team has as much talent as anybody. So, you know, if their shots were not falling in that second-round series against the Denver Nuggets, that could be the reason that they lost, more so than any chemistry issues. So if they start hitting threes and go on this ridiculously successful run in the playoffs this year, it doesn't necessarily mean everybody likes each other and that they have great leadership in the locker room. It just means that the ball was bouncing their way. So I think, well, they, obviously, they, there's a lot of time left in this season. They have a lot to prove in the postseason. But I'm not that concerned with the personalities inside the locker room. Rowan, any other first-round exits you want to praise on the way out? All I'm saying is Paul George wasn't the problem on that team. That's it. We don't we we litigate a lot of Thunder playoff series in these videos. I don't think we need to go even further in the past, but Paul George wasn't the problem. That's all I'll say. Yeah, let's let's go back to your Kendrick Perkins take from a couple of weeks back. I, I really need to hear more about that 2012 playoff run. For more on everything, check us out over at SI.com.